The LNER's team of Prague brought to Britain 200 Jewish children, refugees from Germany. They came from middle-class homes in Berlin, Leipzig, Breslau and Hamburg. The youngest among them were five years old, the eldest 17, and they are to be trained for useful service in Britain. Many of these children are orphans. Others have parents who are in concentration camps in Germany. Britain is ever ready to hold out a helping hand to the oppressed and suffering. But it is incredible in this 20th century that it should be necessary. Next March, it will be 50 years since the Bradford Hostel was founded. I thought that perhaps something could be arranged to mark the occasion, maybe a reunion or at least a circular letter to find out where the boys, and of course Ruth Hanna Eger, are and how we have each fared since we last saw each other. With nostalgic Greetings, Albert Waxman. It was to be an old boys' reunion like few others. Real joy at seeing figures from the past so alive and well, half-forgotten incidents recalled, old stories retold, shared memories of those who had gone. Uniting them all would be the knowledge that they, a handful among the 9,000 who had arrived in Britain during 1939, were the pitifully few survivors of a terrible tragedy. They came through children's transport, a fragile lifeline. They came without possessions and without their parents. They came first to the unpromising port of Harwich and were later, ironically enough, put up at a converted local holiday camp, a strange first taste of their new life free from increasing Nazi oppression. Bradford was the first real English home for 24 refugee boys aged 13 to 15 and one girl. In the Manningham district, a large house had been specially bought to accommodate them. The hostel was to become a powerful influence in their lives. I owe to the hostel a great amount, uh, bearing in mind that we were there during, uh, as, as the saying goes, the most formative years of our lives. I find that the other boys have a different opinion. But to, to me, as, as I say, it was an, in, an institution. And uh, maybe that's my nature. I felt, uh, I must admit, I felt very insecure. It just holds a lot of memories for me. And on the whole, happy years, even though it was such hard life and no little money, little food, a lot of aggravation as well. But there were, there were happy memories, really. It was um, well conducted and well run. And um, in retrospect, we kids were not really as respectful of the people who were looking after us as, as we should have been, or even as, um, as grateful as we should have been. It was understandable. Although the world they'd left in pre-war Vienna and Berlin could be one of fear and cruelty, it could also be a world of gaiety and style. The uprooting from home and parents had been brutally sudden, and perhaps they sensed that their familiar world had gone forever. The reunion was the idea of Albert Waxman, a hostel boy himself, who now runs a large textile business near Halifax. The boys were scattered across several countries, and tracing them took him many months and the writing of many letters. You will be interested to know that arrangements for the reunion dinner are progressing and I'm pleased to report that I have received acceptances from all the ex-hostel boys living in the UK. 
By the way, the menu for the dinner will probably be meat, and therefore will anyone attending who is kosher or vegetarian please let me know. Can you order the dinner? Yes. We are also thinking of arranging a collage of old photographs, and if anyone has any photos from the hostel days, I would be grateful if you could send them to me, and I promise to return them. If you are interested, and if you know of any ex-hostel boys, please reply, giving me the addresses of anyone you know, whether you are in connection with them or not. I do look forward to hearing from you with nostalgic greetings, Albert. Bradford Station. 50 years ago, the boys' first sight of the city. Now, as Jack Halford and his wife eagerly waited for his brother, emotions were very different. In 1939, Jack and his younger brother were Isaac and Alfred Helfgott, looking at a new, frightening world. Now, they're Jack Halford, a retired Halifax metal consultant, and Avram Shomroni, an Israeli kibbutz worker. We made it. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> As a hostel was established in March 1939, I thought that March would be the most appropriate time for the reunion. Morrison Wilfred, David and Hilda Morrison Wilfred. All right, you've got your down for room 10. Thank you. You could just sign which stuff for one. Since Easter is a public holiday, I have decided to organize a dinner for Saturday evening, 25th of March, to take place at the Carlton Hotel, 1 Parkfield Road. No, it'll not go in. They'll not, they'll not go in. I think it will. Oh, yeah. Here we are. This will go with us. It's now a hotel. David Morrison Wilprid, a marketing consultant, and his wife arrived from Essex, and he soon noticed the changes. Here we go, that wasn't here before. Well, it's changed all Yes, it, uh, it certainly has. Change had come to the city too, of course, and to the hostel boys themselves. Perhaps a curiosity to discover just how much drew 15 of the originals back. The rooms have turned to well, so much. Very nice. If there's anything you need, if you just give us a call. Give you, give you a shout, okay? okay? Fine. This wasn't your actual room by any chance, was it? I, uh, no. I, I don't think so. I can't, can't really quite recall because the geography is slightly different now. They'd fled a homeland where Jewish businesses had been boycotted and seized and where Jews had been thrown out of work and home and subjected to physical violence. I can remember one day when my mother took me to, um, well, to an, I suppose, the equivalent of a secure social security office. And, uh, and uh, she claimed what I suppose was her right what you might call the equivalent of income support, something like that. And the official there told her bluntly, we don't pay dues. And uh, I remember my mother bursting out into tears, taking me by the hand and walking out. And to this day, I don't know how she managed to feed us three children, but she did. <laughs> I remember life in Berlin just before we came away was, even at that age, I felt that it was very worrying and I was frightened. Even though I was so young, I was aware people might recognize that I'm Jewish. I knew I wasn't allowed to go to certain parks or to certain places. But I think my brother was more aware of it because he was a little older and he would come home from school with suddenly bruises or blood somewhere around his mouth because he'd been attacked by the boys at school.
I was 10 years old at the time, but you could definitely immediately feel the influence of the Nazi party. And uh, I remember the teacher came in with a Hackenkreuz uh, emblem, the Nazi emblem, and uh, started saluting Heil Hitler. And uh, some of the boys, of course, uh, then started uh, uh, joining the Hitler Youth. remember myself, I couldn't uh, quite understand why I wasn't allowed to join because uh, the euphoria was uh, so great and, 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 and they stood there and, 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 and I must admit I was a bit jealous at the time. In 1938, the anti-Jewish terror spread to Austria with the Anschluss the occupying power, according to German propaganda film, being given an ecstatic welcome. Alec Grunhut, a retired tailor of Leeds, found his life at risk and his comfortable childhood destroyed. We lived in a sort of a ghetto, you know, in the second district of Vienna, which was the Jewish district of Vienna. My father had a tailoring business in Vienna, quite a successful one, and we had a very good life until the Anschluss. Holidays two months in the year, and we really had a good life. Always had a maid, and it all changed in days. I took this photograph after we'd heard a commotion in the street and our flat was on the right of this window and I looked out and I saw some Jewish people being chased by Gestapo. We weren't allowed to take photographs but uh, I took a chance and took one. Nazi propaganda in the form of anti-Jewish posters and slogans was now given free reign throughout Austria as it had been in Germany. Everybody tried to get out. You queued days and days at foreign consulates hoping you'd get a visa, and of course you didn't. All of a sudden there'd be a rumor, or oh, the Brazilians, are, for instance, were are letting a thousand people in. Everybody was there. Started queuing five o'clock in the afternoon for next morning. In the morning they'd come and say, sorry, it was only a rumor. And that's how, how your life went on and until the crystal night when it deteriorated. On Kristallnacht, the night of the broken glass, the Nazis attacked and burnt Jewish property and broke into Jewish homes. When we saw them coming in, we fled upstairs into the attic. Uh, my, we were all, of course, in uh, pyjamas and my mother in a night uh, dress. And we heard a banging uh, downstairs and I uh, went down to see what was happening, and I saw that uh, these SS men in the kitchen, uh, they took their batons and they went from one end to the other as they, in, in the kitchen cupboard and they just threw the whole lot onto the floor. There must have been about half a dozen brown shirts in their uniforms, brown shirts, uh, the um, special caps that they wore you know, the, uh, the, the brown shirt uh, caps, pig caps, uh, jack boots, etc. Wielding sticks, axes, crowbars, whatever, and they look, did look very menacing indeed. They smashed up uh, stoves, cut up mattresses, threw it through the windows, took window frames out, and, uh, as I say, completely destroyed our home which we could never return to afterwards. The ringleader was going to have a girl, uh, but one of his companions said to him, oh, I'll leave him alone, 
and um, he, um, he mumbled something and uh, off they went. I should imagine they were also half cut by then because wherever they went, they had a go at the drinks cupboard. The Nazis had been and painted red J's on my father's sign outside on the railing and big sign and then by the door as well saying Herbert Eger, you know, lawyer. And the red paint, it was still wet and it was dripping, running down. I can remember it so vividly. In Austria, the Nazis, with apparent enthusiastic local support, imposed new terrors and deeper humiliations on the helpless and despairing minority. We were picked up and we were marched along in a group of about 100 or 200 Jews and shouted at and spat at and kicked at. And I particularly remember my father moving around me to protect me uh, because I, I was a bewildered young child of about 12, 13 at the time. Uh, he, he tried to protect me physically and then we were made to kneel down and clean the streets from uh, the previous so-called patriotic slogans, the pre-Anschluss slogans. And were actually made to kneel down oh, yes, 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 yes. And some of us were made to, to literally to, w without being <laughs> too crude about it, to eat dog droppings, etc. You know, to, I mean, it, it was indescribable. It, it seems like a nightmare now. Well, it was, of course, yes. But uh, thank goodness, that's a long time ago. What I remember most of all is the, is the fear. For example, that when I went on an errand for my mother and uh, I saw one of the other children there and uh, he asked me, he said, you are a Jew, aren't you? I said, yes. And um, I don't know what he has been told and he sort of looked at me in a sort of surprised sort of way because I was just like him. I, talked like him, I behaved like him, and I, I walked into legs like him, but, uh, but you know, how, how it's, 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 it's difficult how to describe that, how you can manipulate, how you can manipulate uh, a whole population to, you know, to, uh, to hate, to hate somebody else because uh, they have a different religion. Lutz Seisler has never travelled far from the hostel, working the night shift in a Bradford mill for 25 years before his retirement. For him, it's only a short distance to the reunion. I'm looking very much forward to the reunion. You see, I, I haven't seen most of these, well, boys as we call them, they're now all practically retired now. I haven't seen most of them for all these years and uh, I'm wondering whether I'll recognise any of them. You were looking very well. Do you remember Dulce and Alfred? Oh, and I have a photograph of, the, of us here playing around. <laughs> so have I. How are you? Very well. I'm you nice look lovely. To see you. <laughs> I didn't expect to see you. You didn't. Surprise, no. surprise. Lovely surprise. <laughs> Hello. 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 But you've seen photographs of us playing around here. That uh, seesaw. That was the Do you remember that? Yes, I've got the photographs. So have I. <laughs> the day before the reunion, Avraham Shomroni, his brother and Ruth arrived for a sentimental tour of their old hostel home. Well, this has changed. <laughs> this has changed. Yes. Our, our dining room. <laughs> this, this was uh, your parents' well, uh, apartment. Yes. I remember yes. that very well. All this has no, changed. No, your father's and, uh, office was at the end. No, directly uh, ahead yeah. of you. This was, was the, the first office. place I came to. From yes. here, you wouldn't recognize the place. Oh, no, wouldn't no, recognize. Indeed, 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 indeed not. Recognize. Indeed, recognize. Indeed, no. No. Yes. This is where we had our, our meals. That's right. That's where yes. we had our yes. meals. It looks small. Anyway, you take know? your coats off. Yes. Take your coats off. Don't and the tops London. of the windows haven't oh. changed because I know my budgie used to fly out there. <laughs> <laughs> so these perches are still there. Do you remember those on Sunday mornings when, when most of us or many of us, the boys played cards? Mm. And we got put dear old Walter Abel, who's passed away now, yeah. to hide breakfasts because you had to clear them away at half past ten. Oh, I, <laughs> I wonder whether we'll find any mouldy plates. <laughs> oh, my word, mother, 
There's no cone <laughs> shoveling. Remember the boiler duties. Oh, do I remember big, the boiler duties? Big dirty. pile of coal. I don't know. <laughs> That's where we used to do our boiler duty. Yes. <laughs> do you remember? I do. And where's the machine for, for potato peeling? Ah, that was also uh, somewhere down here. The That's potato peeling. Yes. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. We used, we to, used to have a regular roster, which, which Mr. Eger, dear old Mr. Eger, made out. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. 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 So did you. You know, we have many happy memories. There were a lot of stress. There must have I know, been a lot of sadness about. Of but course, on the whole, but we oh right. yes, we were very lucky. We were very lucky, that and we were case. very lucky with your parents as well. Thank you. <laughs> but I think about them now because now I can understand what mm. they must have gone oh, through. Oh, they must have. Yes. I mean, my father had never done anything in the kitchen know, or in the house before. I know. He was, Suddenly he was a solicitor. Suddenly, had to see to the boiler, peel yes. potatoes, do yes. the gardening. Yes. Ruth's father, Herbert Eger, a lawyer had fled Berlin with his family to become the hostel warden. So, like his boys, he too was a refugee. There was so much work in a foreign country, and it wasn't the easiest of work. I mean, when you've brought up your own children, you realize how difficult it is. And to have 20 odd boys, of all different backgrounds, no parents, it must have been very difficult for them and there were shortages and there was a committee looking over your shoulder obviously seeing that you'd, everything was being done properly. I came home from school and there was always, my mother was so busy in the kitchen I had to help a lot or if, if I didn't have to help they were too busy. I, I somehow felt I was, um, I didn't have enough of my parents time. <laughs> Oh, this is a different. Oh, this is a good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is a different. Good morning. Yeah, I can still find. Oh one. yes. Well, oh, that was the famous law. Uh, the cup. The uh, the larder. Don't you recognise the fireplace? The fireplace, and that's the place where I spent many hours <laughs> doing the dishes. Doing the washing up. <laughs> yes. Yes, I, that, that's the place where I remember the the sort of heart to heart to heart talks with your mother. <laughs> I must say this, meeting Ruth immediately uh, makes uh, her parents appear before my eye. And uh, Mrs. Eger was the, really, the all-pervading mother figure in the house. She really uh, played mother to all of us. But for me personally, perhaps one of the decisive uh, influences in my life uh, was Mr. Eger, who was probably one of the, I, I think, the most civilized person I've ever had the good fortune to meet, and I've, uh, I've had many fortunate experiences of this kind. Uh, uh, really one of the great influences in, in my life that I, that I like to cherish. Oh, look, there's a mezuzah there. They missed that, yes. Painted yeah. over, but still. Yeah, if we still were there. Orthodox Jews, we put our hands to it and kiss it, but we're not. Of course, this I remember. Yes. With glass door, by the way. I remember that, yes, with the glass door. I see. Well, the, all this was open. Oh, total. That yes. was all open. Yes. Wasn't there a well? See how lovely yes. it was. You could stand there was here a well. and see what was yes. going on. Yes, you could. You could look down. It was a well, wasn't it? Yes. yes. But you, you do. You do get a nice view from here, actually. Do you oh, yes. Do you remember it was a very moving experience yeah, because to. it brought back these Very old happy, associations happy. of happy and caring times. The facade, the outside, of course, was instantly recognizable, uh, but internally, of course, it had changed beyond all recognition until one actually opened the bedroom door and saw the same shape. Uh, and even then, the, the, the contents were totally different. Ours were far more utilitarian. It wasn't, it it wasn't, wasn't as elegant, as as elegant now. <laughs> Looking back in retrospect, one tends to have rose-colored spectacles, etc. But in all fairness, it was good. We had the discipline that we all needed, not strict, but in a kindly way, and yet we were free. We were allowed to grow up as boys rather than being regimented. But no. Albert. Yes. Oh, yeah. such a long way. together. Mind you, we all do it in all fairness. We do all owe it all to you. That's one good thing about Ireland. You're never far away from the sea. 
No, that's right. Now we live at. Yeah. So you live on Liffey Water. Uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 it's a bit, uh, it's a bit undrinkable, is that stuff, but... Uh, yes, it's, uh, especially in the summer. <coughs> mm. Do you know that you look much more alike than Ooh. when you were young? Really? We yeah. do? Yeah. We do? You mean I'm as ugly as him? <laughs> no, uh, I've grown as ugly as my brother. <laughs> anyway, shalom. 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 Uh, welcome. Aha! Uh -huh. Hello. Look. Hello. 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 Lovely, to lovely, lovely, lovely to see you too, huh? Come on, come, let me take your coat off. Yeah. How are you? All right, you okay? Nice to see. Where is the better half? There. Oh, there she is. Yeah. Lucy, how are you? How are you, Lucy? Nice to see you, Lucy. Marvelous. If I was the girl, I would kiss you on both cheeks. I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. Oh, wow, well, you still look the same, well. Yeah. For many years. Ah, yeah, well, Hello there. Thank you, brother. Hello. Well, what are you doing? Well, you boys will always call me Isaac or Ike. I mean, to everybody I, else, I'm Jack. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Do you have any difficulty in finding this place? No, no, no. No, 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 no difficulty at no. all. No. <laughs> Coming up from the Dead Sea going to Jerusalem. The road reads, if you've been to Israel, you know, it's the, the road from, from, from Jericho joined it. It was a soldier hitching a lift, he was going home to Tel Aviv for the weekend. He spoke a little bit of English. So he throws his sleeping bag and his, his gun and everything into the, into the back of the car and sits down and talks with us. He says, where do you come from, actually? Dublin. So he says, oh, he says, you've got trouble there, haven't you? <laughs> Hello, Ruth. Hello, Ruth. I've been wondering where you are. I've seen you back in the Cartwright Hall. Years ago. Years ago. Yes. Yes, I'm full of the joy. I've got on my chair. I think we've all put on. We are at middle age bed. Is that what it is? That's what it is. No, it's a long time ago since we had that room up there. Number seven. Number seven, it might be now. So, you could learn me. We were together a long time. Yes, where is he? <laughs> Where is he? And I was laughing and teasing you about <laughs> Not too bad. Not very old bad. Oh. I put a lot into life and I you're put a lot out. And you're, and you're the, you're the, you're the, yes. the, the, it's the only the, way. The, the, and I'm not just talking there, materially. Yeah, no. Materially. Yeah. 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 Wenn sie seinen Kindern noch gewinnt. 